You are about to hear the voice of a staff member at Highland Park Middle School. The language is alarming. Because they're black. And they're the only doing any work. This cell phone video surfaced on social media Wednesday. Students call the woman talking a social studies teacher. She's saying that she targets black people and that she's calling out. A word too tough for Ayanna Allison to repeat. You don't have to say the word. Effing N-words and... Nevaeh Suttle was another student involved. It was very shocking to me when the teacher did say it because I've never been called the N-word before. The first post we saw had more than 25,000 views. Brandy Coleman, Ayana's mom, shared it. She said Facebook has removed the video. People were forwarding me a video from Facebook last night, um, and they said this was an incident from Highland Park. I remember my daughter mentioning what happened to her earlier in the day was recorded. To know that I send her out somewhere that she's supposed to be safe every day and she's not, to know that she's being badgered and being targeted and no one was there to advocate for her, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that I didn't know the magnitude of the situation so that I could intervene before that video. The district responded Thursday. I, like many others, am very disturbed by the racist language that was captured on video in one of our schools. No matter the situation, foul and racist language has no place in SPPS. As educators, we have to be held to a higher standard. Now, many wondering what led to this. Basically, the video is the boiling point of issues between her and my daughter from October till yesterday. There was one point where she came home and she's like, Mom, she called us a bunch of ints. And I just, I couldn't believe that. Those Negroes, or you Negroes, Calling her a Negro? Yes. And so she would come home and she would tell me that, Mom, the teacher's using the N-word. And I'm just like, no, there's no way this is happening. You know, Ayana, is she using it at you or is she using it for the curriculum? Like, I understand what she was teaching. She's like, Mom, we're beyond that now. The district says that employee is now on administrative leave. We will not fall silent in the face of racism in our schools. And we will not make excuses for the harm this causes the children that you place in our care. I apologize to you and I can assure you that we are taking appropriate actions and conducting a thorough review of this situation. The N-word, it has like a deep history. The word that that you're not supposed to use anymore. I don't even like using the word because I'm older now but it's like we just been immune to it so we do use it. But in our reality, it's stereotyped to make us look like fools. Definitely with the R at the end, like I feel like that's more of like, you're trying to come at me. The N word with an A at the end is kind of like a word that black people can use to greet each other. With an ER, I think that's just like racist. My dad used that as well as other derogatory terms. Uh, towards people of the black race. Um, that's just how he talked. Dad did not like black people. And, and he didn't like the idea that he had to do business with them. I actually recall the first time somebody called me that word. Um, it's, it's, it's something that, that really takes you off guard and, and knocks your barriers down. Uh, makes you feel helpless. Do I think the board should be abolished completely? Well, I, I kind of do, but I also think that there's such power behind connotations of words. Whenever I hear that word, I never forget the trauma that's associated with it. Whether, and, and I know sometimes it's not used within my community as that context. When you ask me if I know the history, no, I just know that it was used. To me, it's a variation of Negro. I associate that word with with slavery. I don't know exactly where the word originated. Anything that helps us navigate life and understand how what we say affects people, because that's what we do, um, I think that's important. Learning is important, and if you dig deep, you'll discover throughout American history, the word was used in nursery rhymes. For example, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch up by its toe. You probably know the version with tiger, which was later substituted for the N-word. 
From nursery rhymes to schools across the Twin Cities, that word is still causing pain. Monday, an incident in Owatonna. The chief of police says the posts were made by a few white students and were directed at black students. Back in December, it showed up on a rock at Burnsville High School. It shouldn't be something that we need to handle, especially at school. Like, I come here to get an education. In December, on a student shirt in Chaska. At the end of the um, email, it's just like, we got him a new shirt and that's it. Move on. Move on. After completing several reports, I noticed a common thread. Many school districts said they had a no tolerance policy for this type of language. But still, it was happening. We wanted to find a solution. So I asked my news director, what could we do? So tonight, here's a mini history lesson on why that word causes so much pain. Every black person has their own inward story which is to say that they remember the first time they were called that by somebody white. Everybody has that story. For me, I was 14 years old and I was in Cairo, Egypt. We were in a pool and the young white uh, guy used the word uh, uh, toward me. The N word is an alternative to what some people won't say. Judge Lance Ito, you can say either to his credit or it was a terrible decision. He did not want that word used in his court. He was the judge presiding over the O.J. Simpson murder trial in the 90s. The racial slur appeared in court transcripts documenting officer comments concerning Simpson. Mark Furman and other law enforcement uh, officials in L.A. apparently used that word uh, not only to apprehend O.J., but had used that word in the history. The Simpson trial birthed the term N-word, which has led to what Mays calls historical amnesia. A racial hatred which has manifested in black folks dying, being killed at the hands of white mobs. But before the Simpson case, the word was used without hesitation. The original spelling of the Latin word, N-I-G-E-R, meant black. Later, it took on a derogatory connotation and was used to describe My name. African slaves. It's Toby. Hi. That's a good Lynchings. Uh, people being uh, burnt at stakes. This is what you do to black people if they step out of place. So that's what the word is all about. You can't detach the N-word from that, that torrid historical legacy of white mob violence. Mays, a professor of African and African-American studies at the University of Minnesota says, to understand present headlines with Virginia's governor linked to blackface, we must revisit the past. That word is associated with hundreds of years of not only racial abuse, racial oppression. When teaching the history, Mays explains how the word was used as an attempt to scare Hank Aaron, a black baseball player, from breaking Babe Ruth's home run record. Dear Mr. I hope you don't break the Babe's record. How can I tell my kids that a did it? Dear you can hit all them home runs over them short fences, but you can't take that black off your face. See, that ties in the black face minstrelsy. See, that, that's all related. It overlaps. How do you respond to, for today's youth, the word just means dude or buddy? What's up, my? What's up? To, for, for, for whom? It's in hip hop culture. Rappers use it. And I hear black boys and girls use that word all the time. If white people invented the word to abuse, to maim, to kill black people, then African-Americans are duty bound uh, within the context of their long freedom struggle, the black freedom struggle, to take something that white people created to, to hurt them and to kill them and remake it and to diffuse the power that the word has historically over them. It has inhibited to some degree white people using the word. So white people just want to reclaim their power to use it, but that's a power that black and brown people should never give up. Just like the Jews should never give up the power to police the boundaries of anti-Semitic uh, talk and behavior. You just cannot, because you fought so long to achieve a certain end, if we give people passes to use it, what are we saying to our ancestors? What are we saying to black folks who are alive today? And certainly, what are we saying to our history?